One of the biggest pieces of news in 2023 in the UK automotive market was the arrival of BYD. Now, they're not a new company. They've been around for decades, but they've been more seen as an electric mobility company because they've been building batteries for years. A fifth of all cell phones in the world sold today have a BYD battery in it, and they were fairly unknown here in the UK. But what an entrance they made. Over the past 12 months, they've introduced not just the brand itself, but three new models. They made quite a splash in the D-segment sports saloon with the SEAL, as well as the C-sector five-door family hatchback market with the Dolphin, if you'll forgive my aquatic pun there. But it was this car that was the first to launch in the UK, the Atto 3, which is now, without doubt, probably one of the most hotly contested market spaces of them all, the small, medium-sized crossover, because of course, that is pretty much what's seen as the de facto family car these days. But whilst the seal and the dolphin kind of traded on the sort of value for money stakes, as we saw a few weeks back when I put the seal uh, excellence against the BMW i4, and of course the dolphin is very aggressively priced, the Atto 3 doesn't really have that on its side because there's lots of cars from, dare I suggest, probably more well known brands that are around about a similar type of money in this hotly contested market space. Which begs the question. Why would you buy a BYD over a more familiar nameplate such as this, the Skoda Enyaq? Welcome to this week's twin test. Welcome back to the BYD Atto 3 and of course Skoda's revised Enyaq 60. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we do get on to this week's twin test between the newly revised Skoda Enyaq 60 and, of course, BYD's Atto 3, it is, of course, the time where I would ask you to make sure you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then, once you've done that, make sure you've pressed the little bell button that's down below because that's the way you'll get a notification of when our next video is uploaded and has gone live. Once you've watched it, if you do enjoy it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave us your thoughts and comments down below. Let me know what you think about the cars we review, such as Skoda Zenyak and the BYD Atto 3, and of course, on the Auto EV channel as a whole. Now, I first drove the BYD Atto 3 pretty much a year ago now. It's been 12 months since I last got myself familiar with the Atto 3. And as I say, since then, obviously, we've had the Dolphin and the Seal, which has come along. And it's been a big, bit of a mixed bag with BYD, if I'm being honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, because I really like the seal. And as I say, if you saw a few weeks back, we did put ahead of the BMW i4 eDrive 35, especially when value for money came to the, the equation. But the Dolphin, as I say, is a good little car, but hardly exactly exciting. Whereas the Atto 3, when I drove it, it kind of felt, I don't know, it was just kind of one of those cars I said, I think I need to spend a little bit more time with it. I need to really sort of like get under the skin of the car and find out if that is going to be the car that I could stand here and recommend over one of its competitors. So it was that reason and that reason alone, I thought to myself, now is the time, because I say it's not really a price driven thing because the Atto 3 isn't exactly a bargain in the marketplace which obviously we'll talk about later. And that marketplace does include the Skoda Enyaq, which has been a long-term favourite at Auto EV. I think it's a brilliant family car, if a little bit expensive in some respects. However, the Skoda range has gone through a little bit of a revision. And this is the new 60 model, which is, I don't want to call it basic, but it is the lead-in model to the range. And the price difference isn't exactly what you might think. Okay, as always, we're going to start with styling. So we'll kick off with the BYD Atto 3 first because obviously it's the newest of the two cars. Um, those as you see, we have obviously road tested it before, so we've covered a little bit in that video as well. But it's always worthwhile going back over. Okay, styling wise. Well, yeah, I, it's not the best effort, if I'm being honest uh, about it. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's quite inoffensive. And I think that kind of sums the car up in its overall look. It's quite inoffensive, but you could also kind of cover the badge up and... You're really not sure what badge that could be. There's no, but of course we're not used to BYD in the UK. So they do have to kind of say, set the design language out for us. Um, I don't think it's an, as an attractive car as the Seal is. I think the Seal's a really good looking car, but I do think it's a little bit sort of like more cohesive and better looking than the Dolphin. So it sits sort of somewhere in the middle, but as I say, it is a little bit generic. If this had come out wearing the MG badge, would you have been shocked? Probably not. 
but there is a lot of sort of like data suggest sort of like design elements that they've tried to include there including this sort of like chrono kind of chrome the satin kind of chrome finish here which i'm told is to do with the chinese dragon it's sort of like i think it's the mustache it's meant to be or is it the eyebrows that goes above the eyes i'm not sure but it, it was something that they said back then it's to do with the chinese dragon that, that's sort of like designed at the beginning which is yeah okay i can see that yeah when you stand back and look at it you do you see that yeah you've got some really nice kind of led um headlamps in there with the little kind of blue bits just underneath them i do quite like them they are quite nice and as i say it's all smoothed at the front there's no grill or fake grill um which is something the enyaq has in fairness to it and um, so the cooling's all done down at the bottom as you'd expect because that's obviously where the batteries are located we'll talk about batteries and location and all that a bit in usability there's a tiny little bit of kind of black plastic obviously around the bottom but there's some nice airflow management here as you can get these air curtains that go in here and take airflow around the side of course you get your kind of big prominent BYD badge there, which inset into the bonnet and the seal, and but it's in there, so sort of like it's, it's, it sits proud on this kind of satin chrome moustache, if we'll call it that, at the front there. So there is that. Um, but yeah, it's just a bit. I mean, it's, it's inoffensive. That's the, the the kindest word that I'm going to use for it. You just you're not going to turn people's heads in it. But then again, also, you're not going to kind of stand out for the crowd and for the wrong reasons either. It's just a nice, pleasant looking, well proportioned, small, medium sized family crossover. It's just not very exciting looking. But maybe that's what you want. Now, as you move around the side, I actually think the more I look at it, this is its best angle because I actually really like the proportions of it. They've, they've, they've managed to make this quite kind of cohesive looking and, and it looks a lot better than the rather bland MG ZS, I have to say. As I say, in the side profile, I think this is its best angle. Look how far um, the wheels are pushed apart um, on the car as well. Um, so it sits on the E-Platform 3.0. Um, which is BYD's um, bespoke EV architecture, which underpins other cars in its range. Um, but as I say, obviously, it's quite flexible and kind of modular in the way it can be, uh, you know, sort of lengthened or shortened to obviously suit the car that, it, that it's sitting, uh, that's going to sit on top of it. But as I say, look how far back, uh, sorry, far apart the wheels are, which is going to maximise sort of like interior space. But as I say, it gives it quite a squat and kind of nice kind of, just as I say, proportional look to the car. So I do like this angle here. But again, nothing superfluous nothing chintzy no silly design kind of themes or anything like that it's just a nice well proportioned car um you get 18 inch wheels so there's two uh, cars in the range of the r 3 both get these standard 18 inch alloy wheels and um, which again very very nice they've also got the kind of aero covers on the middle of the spokes as well to help with airflow you get the only little bit of sort of like um uh, nod to the BYD thing on the side is obviously here where you just get BYD design on this nice little kind of wing badge that's fine I don't mind that um, bit of chrome around the DLO you get here just there and then there but then it's a kind of satin kind of finish there and then these they kind of they look like gills or maybe the scales of the dragon I don't know and this bit here whatever they are I I'm actually quite like them they're all right they just again a little bit of detail that's quite nice on it um good sized door handles they're not flush so you're able to get and can get the nice kind of grip of those a little bit of black plastic there and of course you kind of get the, the body color then continues underneath that one of the things I do like is look the doors go right around the bottom of the sill so again when you're kind of stepping into the car if you've got sort of like you know trousers on you know sort of light colour trousers or you know a skirt or a long dress or something like that you're not going to get it muddy um, if you've been in a place like this and you're stepping into the car so that is a nice kind of thoughtful piece of design the way the door goes right under the sill so I do like that good sized door mirrors you'll obviously see when we drive obviously there's lots of safety tech on the byd huge amount of safety tech on it um so it's got sort of like embedded cameras in the mirrors but yeah as i say this kind of side profile i think is the best looking part of the car i really do i think the proportions are nice i think it looks cohesive in its design there's nothing there's no fripperies on it yeah it's quite a, a handsome little car when you see it in this side profile but of course it is round the back where we see the legend that is emblazoned across its rump. Build your dreams. 
Sands, which is what BYD stands for. Uh, yeah, that'd be coming off if this was mine. I'd be getting a piece of dental floss or some fishing line and, and taking that off. Uh, the market has spoken, I think. They don't like it, I think, here in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of Europe, but I think that they're going to come without that from now on. I'm not 100% sure, but it's easy to see the seal that obviously placed a data suggest a more sophisticated market in things like Tesla Model 3, Polestar 2, BMW i4 doesn't have that, it just it's BYD on it. So yeah, I, I'd be taking that off and just, you know, a BYD badge across the back would be fine, but none of that guff. Why do we need that? Anyway, right, but if you then, if you took that off, what are you looking at? Well, again, it's like the front, it's a little bit generic. It's maybe not a bad thing. You've got this light bar that goes right across the width of the car, which reminds me a little bit when it lights up of the Cupras. You know, it's got the kind of bit that kind of comes round and then up in here, you know, from the bottom. It's quite nice. It's a nice kind of signature. Um, there's no privacy glass on the car, which I do find a little bit odd because I quite like privacy glass, especially when I've got my daughter in the back. Um, you know, people can't kind of see into it. I know a lot of people are a bit, bit, bit twixt in between on privacy glass. I quite like it, in fairness. But no, it's not on this car. Uh, high level brake light, obviously, mounted right at the top here on this kind of elongated roof spoiler and of course rear wiper which is brilliant uh, tailgate comes right down to the number plate you do have a reversing camera which is tucked just underneath here which is the top of the number plate not the best place for it because obviously it can get quite dirty it might have been a good idea maybe to see it up there but in fairness they're not the only manufacturer that puts it in that place so i can't criticize byd for that at the bottom You've got, again, the kind of black plastic, um, sort of like veins, if you like, um, that obviously tie it kind of around the front. There's a tiny little bit of gap there where the airflow comes around those vents there. And then again, this kind of satin finish kind of diffuser section there at the bottom of the bumper. Parking sensors uh, in there. And of course, there's a boot release underneath there. Uh, and that's it, really. So as I say, neat, inoffensive not exactly stand out um some will see that as a good thing because as I say there are a lot of data suggest designs out there that are a little bit chintzy and bar that that bar, which is only a badge in fairness i can't really fault it it's a pleasant looking car it's quite well proportioned and as i say maybe you want to fly under the radar a bit maybe you're not really that fussed it just does the job which brings us neatly to the skoda which whilst not being exactly a design classic is a very handsome looking thing indeed Skoda's new design language that's been on the go for a little while now that you can see right across the ranges, you can see it here. Um, and as I say, you, you know it's instantly recognisable as that brand. And that's where the BYD is different. They've, they've sort of like designed three very different looking cars, whereas Skoda, whilst all the family are different, you can see, tie them into being part of that same family. It's the familiar Skoda look where you've got these nice strong headlights. The only bit is obviously this section here, which is obviously the grille, which isn't really needed obviously it is on things such as the fabia and the the, the, the kamik and the karok and you know the kodiak and things like that and the octavia but on the enyaq that's filled in it's just black plastic what you can do however is you can option it with what they call the crystal face which i'd be tempted to do in fairness because actually i quite like it i think people do look at it and go oh that's a bit garish i actually quite like it it was on the it's on the vrs as standard where you've got i think it's 130 led lights and the whole thing kind of lights up and it just gives it a bit more kind of visual interest rather than a piece of black plastic but when it's on a dark colored car i suppose like this this gray color i suppose it doesn't stand out quite so much but yeah there's no getting away from that that bit's not really needed um, big Skoda badge here, you know, once as I say Skoda may have been, I mean if you're my age, I'm over 50, if you remember Skoda way back, you know, the Estelle, the Rapid and things like that, they were the butt of everybody's jokes and it was almost a bit embarrassing, whereas nowadays a completely different company and the badge sits loud and proud, bang in the middle of the bonnet here. Not unlike BMW's Roundel, where it kind of nestles between these two nice kind of bits of the bonnet that just kind of match the top of these kind of grill sections there, so I do like that. A really sharp looking design round here, you can see where the air curtain goes round, um, this bit here, um, just really nice and sharp and this lovely kind of just front spoiler um, with this bit of cooling above it there. You do get the front mounted kind of camera there and obviously you get front parking sensors in the car and again like this sort of like the BYD you get some really nice head LED headlights in there but yeah in terms of styling from the front it's good it takes a win as far as I'm concerned. Now when you move around the side you can see it's a physically bigger car. It's much longer than the BYD. A little bit taller as well, a bit wider. 19-inch uh, wheels come as standard 
um, on the 60. Um, this, car, this particular car has got the optional 20 inch wheels on this, which I quite like actually. And as we'll, we'll see when, it, you know, uh, when we drive it, it doesn't affect ride quality that much. Some nice lines along the side here. Again, a kind of nice sharp kind of just shoulder line that goes along there. No chrome on the car which is a good thing when it comes to sustainability so as you see look it's just the black plastic trim which leads me to the bit i'm not sure this this bit here this kind of fakery here this little black bit of trim here i'm not sure about that i'm not sure whether the, maybe that should just maybe just i don't know maybe have the model designation in there or the skoda lettering rather than this piece of black plastic that's the only bit i'm not 100 percent sure of on the side like the byd you get the good chunky door handles that you obviously can open and again, similar, though not as well executed as the BYD, the doors open just halfway kind of down the sills, so they don't wrap underneath. So you do still have that kind of jutting sill there. You can see that as you get in, you can catch your trouser leg on that. So, hmm, yeah, not as well thought out as the BYD maybe when it comes to that. But of course, you get the black plastic down at the bottom as the practical thing if you're opening against the cab. Uh, integrated black satin finished kind of roof rails up there um, and then it all comes back into this really nice long back with this lovely roof spoil at the top. The Enyaqs that we've featured before on Auto EV have all been quite high specified trims. This is the basic car and I really quite like it. I like the fact that it's not kind of chintzy and with big wheels and chrome bits here and there. I quite like that so yeah it's a handsome looking beast this. So yeah still a good looking car isn't it? Then round the back, pretty much the same really. Nice, clean, crisp lines, nothing superfluous, apart from the big kind of Skoda lettering across the back, which is the way, of course, with manufacturers these days. And it's the older kind of logo, they have changed their logo a little bit now, Skoda, uh, or should I say Skoda. Um, but of course it doesn't say like something like build your dreams across the back, so it's less garish, do they suggest. It's also lost the IV badge on Enya, you see Enya IV. There you go. Uh, but anyway, and then of course the muzzle designation over there, the fact that this is the 60. Uh, big, uh, long, sort of like elongated kind of roof spoiler with the sort of bits here again to help with kind of airflow. Like the BYD, lovely high set uh, brake light mounted up there in the spoiler. Privacy glass, also gets a good nod from me. Uh, rear wiper, which is quite, yeah, it's probably noble average kind of size, but it's a slightly shallower rear window maybe than you get with the BYD. Um, lower set number plate, Reverse camera, as I say, in the same place as the BYD, although it is slightly higher, of course, the BYD is slightly further down. But again, still just above the number plate rather than being mounted up in the roof spoiler. Uh, lower down, of course, you get the more like in the black plastic cladding with the, the reverse sensors in and then the kind of a body coloured section down at the bottom. OK, so as I say, neither car is going to set you pulse racing in terms of sort of you know as they say being design classics uh, and there's no doubt you know say there are you know did I suggest better looking cars out there there are a hell of a lot worse looking cars out there but of the two it's the Skoda that wins for me I just think it's just it looks quite classy I think especially in this grey paint I really do like it obviously you can get different colours of the BYD it's in that bright kind of blue I think they call it soft blue it does come in a really nice grey as well so I'd probably tone it down if it was my kind of car um, but I just think in some respects bar that kind of side profile where you just see that nice kind of well proportioned kind of small crossover um, the Skoda just takes the, the, the win for me because I say I just like the lines of it. I like the fact that, as I say, you can tell that it's got the Skoda design language. And I like the look of Skodas these days. They're a bit more distinctive looking than kind of, dare I suggest, the kind of jelly mold that Volkswagen seem to be turning out. And whilst Audi is obviously quite a good looking car in some respects, you pay the price for that. So believe it or not, of all the sort of Volkswagen Group cars, I think Skoda have got the kind of style off to an absolute winner, certainly when it comes to EVs. Cupra, however, they're a good looking car and it'll be interesting to see what Cupra bring out next because um, I say the Born is a good looking car and way better looking than the ID3. But anyway, of the two cars, for me, it's the Skoda that takes the win in design. But what do I, what, what, what's my opinion worth? Let's be honest, because you guys are out there buying them. Which one would you choose? Do you prefer the look of the Skoda? Or does that BYD more sort of like tick in your boxes, even with that across the back of it? Of course, as always, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Now, when it comes to practicality, the BYD has a boot space of 440 litres and a standard 60-40 split rear seat, which will take total capacity up to 1,138 litres. So it's pretty much on a par with its closest rival, the MG ZS. 
But at first acquaintance, you think that doesn't look a particularly big boot. It doesn't look particularly deep. And you would be correct because we cannot get, well, we can't get them in that way, certainly. So if you have to put suitcases in that way, then we can't get the car, no, the carry ons don't go in at all. However, what the BYD does have, however, is a variable height boot floor because underneath here, there's some cable storage. So if I take that cable bag out, which in fairness, you maybe probably don't carry around with you, you can drop the boot floor down. And now we can get all four suitcases in. There's our two big ones there, a bit larger than medium. There's our two carry-ons. And of course, there's still room down the side for a cable bag and maybe a couple of rucksacks if you really needed to. The only downside with doing that, of course, is when you fold the rear seats down, you don't have a, you've got a bit of a step up, but that's pretty much the case for most EVs. But in fairness, the fact that it's got the variable height boot floor does add to a little bit of the practicality of the BYD R203. And that is fairly good for class. However, variable height boot floor or not, there's no getting away from the fact that it simply cannot touch the Enyaq's gargantuan 585 litres of boot space with its nice oily damped load cover. 585 litres, if you put the standard 60-40 split rear seat down, that takes total capacity up to 1,710 litres, which if you think about it, is the space of the BYDs folded plus another BYD boot. It is simply massive back here. So without having to do anything, our suitcases fit exceptionally well with plenty more space for extra bags and golf clubs and whatever else that you need there. Plus you've got storage down the side here, little storage bits down there. Although there is no storage underneath the boot floor save for the cable, and bizarrely in both cars, despite them sitting on dedicated EV platforms, no under front storage. But my question is, do you need it with a boot that size? Right, rear seats. Well, the BYD is not bad, actually. That's dry driving position. I'm five foot eight. I've got plenty of room here. That seat's a little bit too far back. I should have pushed that forward a bit. Um, but there's plenty of space back here for me, sitting behind someone of my height, height I should say. Um, so yeah, good knee room. Good foot room, and you know if you're a regular viewer, you'll know I like my seat well down. And even with this panoramic roof, there is good head height for me. I think if you're maybe a six footer, you might start to just encroach on that. But what I will say is when this blind is open, that goes kind of to the top of my head here, so there is a little bit of space there. So yeah, there's good room in the back of the BYD, in fairness. Uh, you do need to push the the headrests up a little bit, otherwise they dig into the backs of your thing, uh, your shoulder blades, but that's the same with many cars. Uh, right, storage. Yes, it does. So you've got usual kind of thing. You, there's no sort of like lift up storage bit here, but you've got two cup holders in there, you know, and the kind of squidgy kind of leatherette material there. There's some door bins, although they're not lined and they've got these silly guitar strings on them. We'll talk about them in a second. Um, but you've also got mat pockets in the backs of the front seat. You've also got upper two pockets there for you know other things you know like mobiles or whatever ipads and that one there uh there's a little trough in there and you've also got a usb a and a usb c port back here so connectivity is good too plus you get the little kind of map reading lights in the back as well um you know and the sort of like the, the coat hooks the, sorry the grab handles as you'd expect with the coat hooks attached as well so in fairness the byd is fine when it comes to sort of like rear accommodation Obviously you get isofix points in the two uh, outer seats and they're exposed um, so they're nice and easy to sort of like pop your, your seats into there and again as I say because it sits on that e-platform 3.0 there is it's a dedicated EV platform so there is a flat floor right across um, the bottom of the car so getting three across here wouldn't be too much of a problem at all with your middle passenger having plenty of foot room. I'd suggest in terms of the width of the car it's probably going to be 
three kids or two adults and a child but in fairness as i say the foot room is fine so yeah there's really not a huge amount to complain about back here at all um as i say there's plenty of space in all sort of like extremities you don't feel your legs are kind of pushed up either um as i say the only thing is i say if you were maybe six foot bit taller than me then the headroom might be a little bit limiting but otherwise yeah this is this is this is decent this is absolutely fine fine however is not a word that i would use to describe the back of the enyak vast is a word i would use look at it it's huge back here now that's my driving position as you see i'm five feet eight um and i can sit by myself with bags more i've got loads of foot room underneath the seat loads of knee room and good headroom now admittedly this car is not fitted with a panoramic sunroof it is an option on the skoda it's on standard on the byd but even so i think even if it was fitted you would still have plenty of room even if you were crouching on that six foot mark so there is much more space in the back of the enyak you can get three across however the last time with an enyak i didn't realize i criticized it for having this storage tray here and those people went you know you can take that out you can it's you can just remove it i mean then you've got a complete flat floor so you can get three across and given the width of the car i'd think probably three small adults three people my size wouldn't be a problem but yeah that's great that's in, i like the fact you, you've got that so it's extra storage um and if, you, and if you don't need it you just take it out talking of storage you've also got uh mat pockets in the backs of the front seats with an additional second pocket for like a mobile you've got good door bins they're a bit deeper than they are in the byd uh in fairness you've also got a flip down armrest here that has a fold up uh, cup holder plus a little bit of a tray in there as well uh, for putting maybe a, a, an ipad in or whatever plus as well you also have remember that load through facility you don't get that in the byd there's a load through facility um as well so it means you obviously you can still get two people either side of a longer load so again you've got kind of i don't know um skirting boards or cutting rails you've been to the local diy store and some bits of wood or whatever you can still get the kids on either side plus a long load through so that's good as well talking of children isofix point as you'd expect nice and easy to get to there's located behind the plastic covers here but skoda also offers an isofix point in the front passenger seat as well so that's on standard as well so you get three isofix points in the skoda um you do get i'm not sure if these are optional or not i think they might be but then i didn't see it on the spec sheet these integrated rear blinds and the doors that's handy my daughter really liked them you know to put them up and down plus there's a temperature control in the back here as well so whilst the byd is very good and absolutely no problem at all in accommodating sort of like a small family there's no doubt in my mind the enyak counters it not just with the big boot but a much much bigger rear accommodation as well um before i start on the interior at the front of the byd a very very quick apology to byd and to you dear viewer um because i said that the scored enyak uh, trumped the byd and isofix points because it doesn't have one in the front of the byd it does i just didn't realize apologies so three isofix points two in the back one in the front seat so they're both the same that way so apologies for that i hadn't realized uh right byd interior well as i say i haven't really changed my mind about this since i first road tested the car in 2023 and i said back then whilst i would like to have seen maybe a little bit more flair on the exterior the interior was maybe a little bit overstyled for me and it still is i i just this is not byd's best interior i think the dolphin and this the seal certainly i think is a phenomenally good interior this just seems like a bit of a it's just a mismatch of different stuff in here they say i'm told that the design on it is said to mimic a gym believe it or not gym equipment so i thought this was more like an aircraft style you know the gear the transmission lever was more like the aircraft style throttles but seemingly it's to be like a kettlebell and this armrest is said to be a um treadmill with its i don't know it's just and these are said to be kind of those kind of weights i don't know it's just a i don't yeah i don't like it it's all just a bit it's too much there's just too much going on in here also you can only get it in this color which is this white blue red and black it's too many colors it's just oh, it's all going on so that's the first thing that strikes you when you step inside it's not byd's best interior whilst to say the outside is perfectly pleasant nothing wrong with it maybe a little bit plain in here it's overload as far as i'm concerned uh, the main talking point is as always with BR byd is the rotatable uh, screen uh, which you press this so you can see it rotates now 
as I said again, the on the seal, uh, I don't mind it so much because because the whole thing sits a little bit kind of lower down. You got better view on the Atto three. The gap now between the mirror and that is just a little bit too. It, there's, you just notice that it interrupts um, the base of the windscreen. So you're you know when you're driving, irrespective of your driving position, you are aware that something is there in your peripheral and it's this big screen. So some people may like it, you know, and obviously when you've got maps on. You might quite like the sort of like the maps being like this. You know, you get the pole star and you know, you know the kind of the Volvos, the kind of portrait style maps. I, I don't see any other need for it, and personally, I wouldn't turn it. I, I think it's too intrusive into your forward vision. This, um, so yeah, so I would always have it rotated background to be in a landscape form. Uh, Twelve point eight inch screen, so it's good size. Um, yeah, I mean, everything's kind of here. So, you know, as usual, you kind of just takes a little bit of time getting used to it. So you've got inbuilt Spotify, uh, navigation, you've got DAB, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, um, uh, radio, as you'd expect, smart charging, sort of like things like that. So you can, you know, there's quite a lot there. Uh, the, 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 yeah, it's a bit, it's okay. I don't think it's as slick as some others, um, but it's all right. You know, it's okay. And not absolutely everything's on here, which is a good and a bad thing, but I will come on to that. Um, let's talk about in terms of what is on here, and that is your ventilation controls. So when you're on this screen here, if you press, um, for instance, this fan down at the bottom, that brings up your climate control system. So you've got your temperature obviously on this side here, and then you've got fan speed and direction. You can control where the airflow is going by touching the screen here, or you just flick it straight onto auto and it sorts itself out. Um, when you back on the standard screen, it is here, the temperature, so you can control the temperature, which is on the main screen. So you do have relatively quick access, but it is a bit fiddly just to get it. You've got to kind of, you see, it's not picking up my finger there all the time. It's just a little bit fiddly just to get it exactly how you want it. Now, there is a voice activation system on the car. So if I say, hi, BYD. Switch off air conditioning. Got it. Turning off AC. So you can do various things like that through it, but it also does um, interrupt quite a lot. And there's a lot of noises goes on, as people know. Um, you know, my kind of pet hate with um, cars is obviously, sorry, it's turned off the AC, but it hasn't turned the fan down. Um, so my pet hate with cars, obviously, is the intrusive uh, speed limitation and things like that. It's really intrusive on the BYD. I mean, properly intrusive. Now, when I tested the seal, people said, oh, you can just drag down from the top of the screen and switch it off. Can you? Because I can't see it, when I, and, it's, and that's taken me three swipes to go down. But I can't see it here. I've got media volume, guidance volume, brightness. See, look. Heating, energy. There's nothing there that says, maybe you need to set it up as a shortcut, do you? Yeah, maybe you do. Anyway, I, I, I don't know how that works, but to me, again, it's far too fiddly to go in and just turn something off. That's what I will say. There's another little thing that I'm a bit, um, or at least I find really, really odd. The buttons down here, there are physical buttons on the car, and there's a button down here marked mode, and that's your drive mode button, yeah? But up here on the steering wheel, there's a button marked mode. That isn't the same button. That's not the same mode. That changes the source. Why is that not called source? So when you press that, I was trying to change the drive mode the other day, and what it was doing, it was going from the radio to the Spotify to the C, you know, to the um, DAB. And uh, why is it the same tag but do two different things? That's odd. Anyway, there we go. It's not all bad. Let me attach. There's one more thing that I'm going to moan about, and then I'll move on to some positive stuff. Um, this driver display, a little five-inch driver display, mounted on top of the steering column. It's exactly the same um, that I've had in other BYDs, and it's still the same issue that I have with that. There's a lot going on in this screen. That for a small five-inch screen, there is a huge amount of information in there. Things like the time, the outside temperature, your auto lights, um, your brake regen. Oh, why does all that need to be in here? Why is that? Because you've got the time up there and the outside temperature there. So why does it need to be duplicated there? The secondary information could do with being left on that and this being a little. So all the rest of it, like your speedo, your your power meeting, your range, 
and what mode you're in and stuff is quite small. That could do with being bigger and then just leave the rest of the, the sort of like the the other stuff that we don't need to know at a quick glance over there. Right, that's my moan over. Right, what's good about it? Right, well, it, first of all, it's very well equipped. Um, BYD, everything comes as standard on the car. This is the excellence model we have. A panoramic glass sunroof, as you would expect, and it is vast. The blind goes right all the way back past the rear passenger, so it floods the cabin in with light. So that is very, very good. On the whole, build quality is good. There are a couple of areas where you can feel a bit of cheapness. These vents, for instance, here, you know, they squeak, you know, they just don't feel good. And also, whilst this here, this is a bit odd, because it's, it's thingied red with a plus and a minus, so what you think is that's going to be hot and cold, it's not, it's to switch the the, the air vents on and off. Why is it coloured red? I don't know. Why is it just not coloured white like other things are? All, all the other buttons. Why is that red? Because it makes you think it's going to be hot when you push it forward and cold and you push back and it's not. That's odd. The steering wheel, however, is a really nice size and I prefer the steering wheel in here than I do in the Enyaq in the sense that it's a nicer size. It feels better in the hand. The material's questionable it's that pleather that we get on the the vegan leather that we get in so many other cars now um but the actual diameter of the wheel and the thickness of the rim feels much better than it does in the Skoda the Skoda feels too large um to my view um and the physical buttons that are in the car so the ones that are grouped around this transmission selector so the parking system the blind spot assist auto hold uh, automatic climate front defrost um, and the thumb wheel, they feel really quality, you know, when you press them. They've got almost a kind of VAG, Volkswagen Group, kind of action to them, which is nice. There's a nice damp damping to the buttons. So that feels quite quality. And the same with the buttons on the door as well, you know, the, the electric window switches. There's a nice action to them. They've got a nice kind of just a feel to them that I do like. Same with the ones on the steering wheel. You know, again, you know, it just feels like they've got a real nice kind of slickness to them and you've got these nice little thumb wheels like you do in the Skoda for adjusting volume so it's nice and easy to do there's one on the wheel and there's one dish down here if your passenger wants to control it um, and then obviously just pressing it for on and off so I do like that there's a reasonable amount of storage you get wireless charging pad is standard in here then there's a storage tray underneath here there's two cup holders but like the Skoda they won't take my big Yeti coffee flask other coffee flasks are available and um, so I've got to bring my smaller one which is actually quite good um, and a water bottle so they sit in there better than they do in the Skoda and you've got a really deep bin here in fact I can get my whole arm into this bin here um, there so there's loads of storage space the only downside I'm not particularly keen on is these guitar cords down in the door my wife got in the other day and she's like what on earth is that and I did say it's like a guitar chord and she played with them for ages and she's like yeah she said, I don't know if I like that it's a bit weird when the rest of it's modelled like a gym why have they gone for a musical instrument down there yeah anyway. and I can just see them going a bit saggy and being a bit thingy worst interior for me of the three cars that it presented us with last year but it's not horrific in terms of there's a lot of equipment it is very comfortable but I just think a lot of other people do it a lot better all right so we've jumped into the the Enyaq now and uh, you can see the difference immediately you've got a really nicely kind of styled interior here everything's very a bit more cohesive just that little bit more I don't know, just, yeah, just easier on the eye, dare I suggest. Now, I get it's going to be personal taste sometimes, but, you know, I only, can only give you my opinion of these things. Um, but, you know, as I say, I just find the BYD just so overstyled on the inside with just so many different materials going on. I, yeah, just, I don't get on with it. This is the first time that I've actually tested the basic Enyaq. Um, the Enyaqs we've had on the channel before have always been sort of, you know, higher, higher in the range. You know, I think it was the 80... The 80 that we did originally, then it was the 80X Sportline, and then we did the VRS. So this is the, the basic car with the loft, no, the lounge uh, option fitted. I have to say, I really like this. I really, this material, for instance, is beautiful. This has got this kind of, I don't know what it is. I think they say it's like a kind of microfiber kind of suede up here. I haven't stopped touching it since I've been driving the car. It's lovely. And on the doors, it's so soft. It's, it's it's gorgeous. 
I really like this. And um, you also get, whilst you get kind of slightly kind of, well, the slightly harder, but there is a bit of give in the sort of like the plastic on top of the door here. On top of the dash, it's all squidgy and rubbery and it's nice, you know. Further down, you know, so like along the side of the transmission tunnel, again, it's kind of covered in this um, pleather material, this fake leather um, that's down here. And then obviously you get the inserts and the seats, but the rest of the seats are a, a, a combination of that Alcantara and that microfiber up there which really holds you well in the seat it really kind of grips you well so i like that the fact that it isn't leather and you kind of slide around on it so i do like that talking to the seats um like i said when i was in the other car the byd these are a little bit flatter they're not quite as well um padded as the, the the byds but they've still got a good amount of support so you get a nice lateral support down the side you get shoulder support not quite as much as you get in the byd and the headrests are a little bit further back but they do adjust they're not part of the seat like they're on the byd and um, you do get a slightly longer squab and um, it's electric adjustment on the driver's side that has tilt thank you um, but manual adjustment on the passenger side and you've also got three position members in the driver's side. So for instance, my wife and I drive our, our main family car. She's a lot taller. She has one uh, setting programmed in and I have the other. So it's a lot easier if it's part of this, you know, you're sharing the driving of the car to have the memory seats. So the seats are, are good. As I said, the steering wheel is the only thing I'm not 100% keen on in terms of the driving position. It feels really large in diameter. It feels almost kind of like the old Mercedes wheels used to feel, you know, where they were kind of really quite big. Um, yeah, I think the BYD's rim is actually a little bit nicer uh, to drive and when you're manoeuvring. It just feels a little bit quicker as well. Uh, that's the only thing. I quite like the style of it, you know, with the, just the two spokes and then very simple buttons um, grouped around either spoke with the paddles behind the steering wheel to adjust brake regen. Um, but as I say, yeah, I just feel it's a little bit too big in diameter, whereas the BYD just feels a bit more a bit more nice and a bit more easy just to sort of like maneuver the car around with. So that's that. Um, column stocks, as you expect to find, you know, indicators, wipers, cruise control on that side. There's some lot of physical buttons in the car, um, but they're nicely styled, so there's not a whole, they're not like sh the shotgun approach to them. So down by my right knee, I've got things like the, the light switches where you'd expect to find. Skoda, thank you. Four window switches. I don't have this silly thing that Volkswagen do. You have to press one button and then another to activate the rear window switches. Four window switches there. Thank you very much. Um, down here, you've got the physical uh, buttons here, which will bring you up short. So um, when you press set, you've got things like we can set, things like interior monitor or traction control. These are all shortcut buttons. Mode that takes you into your driving modes, which you've got obviously equal, normal, and sport and individual. Uh, park. So you get your parking camera, um, up hazards locking, climate control system, so it brings up the more in-depth climate menu, and then maximum defrost and rear heated rear screen there. Wireless charging pad down here, which is nice. It's rubber tray, it grips the phone really, really well, but there's also connectivity as well through a USB port as well if you do want it. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, standard. You do get the slider controls for the volume. However, like you do in the Volkswagens, however, a nice, uh, slightly nicer, you've got also the volume control on that thumb, on the steering wheel, that thumb control that you do in the BYD, and that feels really nice and tactile um, when you're scrolling through it. So the fact that, although yes, there is that slider control, you've still got a physical control there. So thanks, Skoda. The cup holders, first world issue this, but the cup holders are tiny. I can't get my big yeti flask in there so i mean you know i've got to bring the smaller one and even just a standard size water bottle you can barely fit in there now you can adjust the size of it but if you adjust the size of it, it means you can't get one on the other side so you do have to maybe end up putting my yeti flask i had to put in the door the other day but upset about that but yeah anyway you've, the cup holder is a bit useless but you get this tray behind it here for things like um, your sunglasses or your wallet or whatever there's a, like the BYD is another tray underneath the console that's rubber at the bottom stops things sliding round about and you get um, a door a bin here you've got an actual bin you can take uh, you know a, like a, a tray you can take out and there's also a deep bin in here um, that also has a little hinged lid on it as well you know, for putting sweetie papers in and obviously you can empty it out there's also an elasticated cord in there Skoda really think about stuff like that how you use the car as a family 
And I like the fact that it's got all those little bits and pieces. So that's quite good. Um, the door bins as well are lined with carpet. Thanks, Skoda. That's what I like to see. Um, okay, I haven't mentioned the infotainment system, so let's do that now, and then we're pretty much done in here. So the infotainment system itself, um, whenever we've had Volkswagen product, ID product on here, it's always been a, a real criticism. Um, apart from the ID7, which now obviously now has the new updated um, infotainment system. But Skoda, a bit like Audi, don't use, or they certainly seem to use different software um, to the Volkswagens, because I've always found the Skodas really good. Really slick, really responsive, a little bit slower as you swipe through, but the graphics are nicer than they are in the BYD. Um, everything just looks that little bit slicker up here. Yes, you still have to go into control things, um, such as the climate, but again, like the BYD, it is always on at the base of the screen for things like just the actual temperature control and your heated seats, they're there as well if you have them. I think you also get gesture control as well, do you? I think you do, but I'm a bit rubbish with stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so you can go into, as I say, if you press the climate button there, it brings up a much more in-depth, and you can have smart climate, where you just you know have defog windows, warm my feet, warm my hands, cool my feet. And that will also activate the voice. You can do that through voice activation. So if you just say, you know, you want to cool your feet, you press the button and ask it to cool your feet, that switches it on. Um, so, you know, there's a lot more um, in-depth thing there. Plus, you've got your classic aircon controls that you can control here, a heated steering wheel, um, fan speed there, obviously, you can control it through. Um, settings menu, you know, so for heat seating, your automatic recirculation. So you can really go in, in depth, but your main controls for just adjusting temperature, they're physically there, they're always on, but again, like the BYD, they're on the screen, not rather than a physical button. So that is there, and the same for the heated seats. So that's okay, I like that. Um, obviously, you get standard kind of inbuilt navigation. It's reasonably good, quite like it, um, it's quick to respond. Um, you know, if you're asking it to, like, where will we ask it to go? Well, let's go to Horsell near Woking. Um, there you go there. Tells you what you need to know. And, of course, you get your, your map up there as well. So, yeah. And, obviously, as you see, you can also use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever, because you've got the wireless um, Apple CarPlay. So, infotainment system is probably one of the best that the Volkswagen Group give you. So, it's very, very good in here. Lovely big screen. 13-inch uh, screen that you get on the car. Obviously, like unlike the BYDs, it doesn't move. It's fixed there. But you've got, like the BYD, because it's in that position, you've got a clear view of the windscreen. The oh, it does have look, it does have gesture control. It's, there you go. See, I can make it work. So you do get um, a good view out of the car. Now, the car, you sit lower in the Skoda than you do in the BYD. So you don't have that kind of tall um, SUV-like driving position. It is a much more kind of crossover normal size car feel about it in terms of where you actually sit but you also sit in the seat and everything kind of comes up around you the driving position bar that steering wheel the size of the wheel is very good dead ahead good big door mirrors again visibility around the car is excellent so you've got the, the, the side um, windows plus the ones at the back there and you get the, this uh, blind spot monitoring stuff in there you get a little yellow light on the side of the mirror which I do quite like so it's nothing fancy but you just get the little it catches your eye this yet amber light that comes at the side of the mirror that's excellent um, but the feeling of quality is incredible in here I mean Skoda just absolutely I think Skoda are the best of the Volkswagen group for interior quality now, I really do. I think they're surpassing Audi in some respects. Everything feels like it's gonna last for like billions of years, it really does. It's just phenomenal. You know, everything feels well screwed together. There's not a rattle, a squeak, a, a, anything out of it. It's just lovely and as I say, everything you touch just, I mean, admittedly, this is an optional pack for the interior, but gosh, it's just lovely. I, can't, I genuinely can't stop touching it. So it's, it knocks the BYD out of the park in terms of the materials used and in terms of the feel of everything, in terms of the switch gear. Whilst the BYD is very good, the Skoda's pff, next level on. It really is. It's superb. Um, and whilst you think it's going to be a little more spartan 
um, in here than it is in the BYD. It isn't really. I've got electric driver's seat with memory. Okay, the passenger seat's manual where it's electric in the BYD, but the seats tilt. You've got heated seats, you've got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you've got wireless charging pad down in there. Um, obviously, you've got the safety equipment that you're used to, you've got you know the ADAS systems, you've got blind spot monitoring, you've got a heated steering wheel in this car. And as I say, then the materials themselves just feel so much nicer in here. So yes, it's the Skoda that definitely takes the win when it comes to interiors. Okay. Time to talk about batteries and range and stuff. Start with the BYD. Um, 60 kilowatt hour battery on the Atto 3, which should give, according to WLTP figures, a range of up to 260 miles. Now, it's BYD's infamous blade battery, um, which is a, the new way that they can construct it. It's a, it's a cobalt-free lithium-ion phosphate battery, um, which is arranged uh, in sort of like blades, almost like, almost like razor blades across. The cells are done that way. And it's done that way to aid with thermal management, and it's also embedded into sort of the chassis. It's built into the platform of the car, uh, and it goes through the nail test or something, really. So it's very safe, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and it's very good for the environment, obviously, because obviously it's that cobalt free battery as well. Also, the way that BYD build the powertrain, uh, they call it an eight in one kind of powertrain, so everything's kind of built into one, um, and then and that helps with the thermal efficiency of the car as well. So they say it's more likely you're going to achieve that sort of range out of the car, and its charging curve is probably slightly better too because of that. Talking of which, charging, car, uh, charging speeds are 150 kilowatts, so not outstanding, but certainly par for the course in this class of car. And as usual, your benchmark 10 to 80% is achieved in just 29 minutes. If you're charging up from a 7 kilowatt wall box, then it's under 10 hours to go from flat to full. But the BYD does have an onboard 11 kilowatt charging capability as standard, as well as vehicle to load for charging out external devices and a heat pump as standard which is optional on the ENIAC, disappointingly. Now, in terms of the battery size, it's par for the course. It's 58 uh, kilowatt hours usable capacity. Um, so WLTP range, very, very similar. 247 miles that you should get out of the ENIAC. Charging speeds are a little bit down. However, they're better than they used to be because when the ENIAC first came out, you'd only get a 50 uh, kilowatt charging speed as standard, which was woeful, and you had to pay extra to get more. They've upgraded that now, so 120 kilowatt charging speed is standard on the ENIAC 60. It's 130 kilowatt on the 85 models, so a little bit better. But still, your usual benchmark, 10 to 80 percent, is just a few minutes longer at 32 minutes as opposed to the 29 minutes the BYD. Uh, charging from the 7 kilowatt wall box um, is again similar. It's nine and a half hours to go from flat to full, but like I said, you don't get the onboard 11 kilowatt charger um, on the Skoda nor do you get vehicle to load capability and as I say disappointingly a heat pump is an option. So the BYD um, is a single motor car it's only available with single motor you don't get an all-wheel drive uh, BYD uh, like you do in the seal. Sorry again? <laughs> you see every time I mention the name of the car it does that so that's it. Who do you want to call? I don't want to call anybody I missed that. Which contact or phone number do you want some more? <laughs> tell me the name of the contact you want to call, or tell me a phone number. Cancel, cancel, please. Right, let's start again. So, th this car, the R23, um, is a single motor car. Uh, you don't get it a dual motor. Um, and it produces 204 uh, horsepower so not to 60 time is 7.3 seconds so it's quite you know sprightly in terms of they're all right about this sort of figure aren't they you know sort of like, you know 200 horsepower seven eight seconds and not to 60 so there's no real surprise there but how does it actually drive well it's quite nice in fairness the one thing that you do like or sort of i like about the auto 3 um maybe over the enya because you seem to sit a lot higher in the car and I don't just mean on the seat, you feel physically totally taller in the car. So it's got much more of that kind of SUV-like driving position, whereas I say the Skoda is a bit more crossover slash large estate car style of kind of driving position. So that's the first thing that you notice. Um, so you get a good view out, you get a good view of you know sort of like what's around you. Um, there's a good view of the extremities of the car. There's a good um, you know a good way of being able to see 
uh, where the car can be placed. You know, if you're in a multi-storey car, but quite I can't quite see the bonnet, but that's because I sit low and I'm quite short. But it's not too bad in terms of that. And as I say, the actual extremities of the car, it's quite a kind of compact uh, design. So where you see, if you can see the extremities of it, that pretty much is the end of the car that you're looking at. So from a parking point of view, um, it's it's easy. You know, it's quite a nice sort of like size of car. Plus as well, you've obviously got loads of driver assistance systems on it. You know, there's lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, emergency brake assist, uh, the, the collision mitigation, all everything. You think of a think of a, a an acronym, and it will have it. There's no doubt about that. But does that make it good to drive? Well, it's okay. You know, it's it's there's a lot to like about the Atto Three. Um, as I say, it's a good driving position. It's quite comfortable, and uh, in terms of the seat position, I prefer the steering wheel over the Enyaq, and the performance feels sprightly enough. However, there's a couple of things that the more time I've spent with it, the more that I realise isn't quite so good. The refinement is nowhere near like the Enyaq, and dare I suggest, having driven, been driving the Renault Scenic for a couple of days this week, the new Scenic E-Tech, that knocks spots off of this in terms of its refinement. There's a, quite a lot of noise coming through this car. Um, there's a lot of road noise. There's a lot of wind noise as well. So yeah it's, it's nowhere near as refined as other cars in the class um, even as a transition from that kind of rough patch of road to that smoother bit there where they've resurfaced it there wasn't the noticeable difference that you might see on some of the cars there's also a really strange kind of ride quality to it it seems to just not bounce and not flow it does one nor the other it just kind of you can feel there's almost a little a bit of a delay in it sort of like sorting itself out after you've hit a bump it's a bit odd my wife was been talking to me this week when she's been in both cars, um, and we'll talk about the Skoda in a minute uh, when we're in the car. But she said the ride quality in this was not her favourite. You know, she said it just felt it wasn't behaving itself. That's how she put it. It's just not behaving itself on the road. You know, in terms of its ride quality, and I would have to agree with her on that. The other thing I'm not so keen on is the the brake regeneration. Um, you get basically two levels of it. Now, again, if you're a regular re uh, viewer, you'll know that I'm not the biggest advocate or fan of one pedal driving. I know some people love it. I'm not really that bothered about it. I'm quite happy to do the braking. But I've got to view it from everybody else's point of view. And there is just the two levels. And it's down here, you can't even really see what it is. So it's either standard or high. And I don't think it's that great. I don't feel the difference between the two. I think the regen's, well, rubbish, to be honest with you. Yeah, I just don't see the point. It hardly feels any different. Hmm. So that's another thing that I'm going to say. I don't think they've, they've done the regen particularly well. Right, this mode thing, because I said there's a mode button here, but that controls what you're listening to. Instead, it should say source. On any other car, that would say source. Um, you know, because obviously that's what it is. But in here it says mode. But there's another mode button here, which is actually your driving modes. Now, when you press it, it's on this screen here that it tells you. So whereas in the Skoda you get the thing that comes up on here and it tells you what mode you to select, it tells you here. Okay, so it's a physical button, but it is just in front of you. So if you're in sport mode and you put your foot down, it picks up its skirts. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's good, you can feel a difference, you can feel the difference. So there is the three driving modes as you would expect. Normal, Eco and Sport. Eco, yeah, it's a duller throttle response, but again, it's a bit like the regen. There doesn't seem to be a massive difference between the two, between Eco and Normal. Just, I don't know, it's just, it's just odd. I don't think they've kind of defined them very well, if that makes sense. Right. Let's go back to normal because I don't like eco. There we go, we're in normal now. Right, bit of rough road going down here. And yeah, it just, yeah, there's a lot of suspension noise coming from the car. You can really feel it, you know, and the camera might be shaking a bit there. There is a lot of suspension um, noise and road noise coming through. This is a really rough bit of road that I like to bring the cars down. And yeah, you can feel it's not, the chassis is not as well behaved as other cars in its class. So you 
drive that Renault Scenic or a Kia Niro, I suggest as you're about to see, um, and there are other cars that can handle that a lot, lot better. So yeah, on the whole, it's an okay car, is what I'm trying to say. I'm glad that I have spent more time with the Auto 3. Um, when I drove it last year, and I did say it's a good car, and it is, and I don't want you to think that it's a bad car, because it's not. There'll be people buy this and will be perfectly very happy with it. But, as I say, if you look at the price point of it, and you look at what else you can buy for the same money, there are better cars than this out there. Um, you know, and from more established manufacturers. And as I say, there's not enough plus points with the Auto 3 to make me overlook the negatives at this price when the others do it better. Yeah, you can see everything's standard on, it's got a good warranty, yeah, all oh, that's great, brilliant. But actually, it's just not, it just doesn't feel that great a car to drive, it's just okay, you know? As I say, the seat's nice, the seating the position's nice. As I say, I prefer the steering wheel to the Auto 3 to the Skoda. It's got a nicer size of steering wheel, and it's got a reasonably kind of good response when it comes to the steering. You know, there's not really that much of a, a delay in the response to the steering, so it's quite accurate. But as a comfortable, quiet, kind of refined car that I'd want to take my family in and disappear off for maybe a long weekend somewhere, others do it better. Okay, so jumping from the BYD into the Enyaq, and what are we faced with? Well, you know, again, quite similar in fairness, you know, single motor car. You can have the Enyaq with dual motors, you can have it with all wheel drive, but you've got to kind of climb up to the, the 85X um, or the VRS before you get a dual motor one. Um, but the single motor car, I think is perfectly good, I'll be honest with you. It's 180 horsepower. Um, it's a bit slower to the 60 sprint, it's 8.6 seconds, um, so yeah, it's just over a second slower than the BYD, although it doesn't really feel it, it is a slightly heavier car, um, you certainly do sort of like feel the extra kind of physicality of the Enyaq over the, um, over the BYD. One thing you immediately notice is, as I say, the driving position, you do feel that you're sitting in the Enyaq, not on it. Um, so there isn't the kind of big SUV kind of, sort of like driving position that you might get. You could be sitting, I say, in a kind of superb estate driving the Enyaq or, a, you know, an Octavia estate in that sense. You know, it just doesn't feel like a big crossover or SUV, like, as I say, when you're in the Auto 3. Some people prefer that, you know, as I say, I quite like the kind of driving position we sit in it, but I do appreciate that there's going to be others that do like that. I mean, my wife likes the kind of high driving position. That's why she sits, although she's much taller than me, she has a seat cup quite high in the car. Um, talking to my wife, I did mention when I was driving the Auto 3, she was going on about ride quality in the two cars. She's not 100% keen on the ride quality then, yet, believe it or not. Um, she did say that she felt it was a little bit unsettled. Now, I do agree with her up to a point. There is certainly a firmness to it that you do notice. Um, you know, when you, you're going through the sort of like, you know, the, sort of the more kind of popped marked areas of the roads that, that are around where we live, um, it doesn't glide over them, like say the Renault Scenic does. Um, you do feel sort of like more chatter coming from underneath the car. But I'm going to attribute that a little bit to the 20 inch wheels. There is an element of that I think will be down to those 20 inch wheels. It's not perfect, you know, the damper control, but what it doesn't do where the BYD just has that slight kind of pore poising motion, this doesn't do that. The dampers feel much more in check. They feel like they deal with the bumps much better and much more quickly than they do in the BYD. So uh, there's no doubt about that. One thing that you noticed with the BYD when I first started driving, and I didn't really talk about it, is the quite intrusive safety systems. Now, as I say, it's got them. It's speed limit warning. Oh, God, does it have a speed limit warning? It chimes at you, beeps at you, it tells you you can over the speed limit, it talks to you, all of that guff. This does it too. You can take it off. You can, sort of like, you know, sort of like take these things off in the Skoda, the same as you can in the BYD it's a bit easier in the Skoda, dare I suggest, to take them off, so to deactivate these systems. The lane keep assist, for instance, is quite, you can feel the wheel kind of tug at you um, in the, the Enyaq a tiny little bit more than you could in the BYD. There's no doubt about that. Um, talking of steering wheel, I did mention it. 
the, the Enyax wheel doesn't feel quite as nice as the BYD, it feels quite big. So when you're doing a kind of manoeuvre, you know, you're, you're turning into a, a junction or a roundabout, or whatever, there's much a much bigger helm to kind of get you, sort of like, you know, there's a much more a kind of physical um, side to sort of like, you know, doing the steering in the Enyax than there is in the BYD. That being said, the car turns in nicely. Um, there's less body roll because you're, you're sitting lower down, the car is a lower car, so there's less body roll than you get in the BYD. And as I say, whilst there is an element of um, suspension uh, intrusion on harsher surfaces, it's nowhere near like the BYD is. Wind noise is kept much better in check as well, so refinement in the Skoda is much better than you get in the Arto 3R as well. The seats, we spoke about those when I was um, doing the interior of the car. As I say, there's a good support that you get from the BYD seats, even around about the kind of shoulder area. The Enyaq seats feel flatter. They don't feel, at first, you think, oh, they're a bit firmer and a bit kind of thing. It's a bit like a mattress in some respects. A lot of people say you're better off with a firmer mattress. I would say on a longer drive, they will be, these will be the better seats, but there's no getting away from the fact that the BYD seats are very good when you first jump in them. They've got nice kind of shoulder support and a bit more cushioning in them, but I think on a longer drive, the Enyaqs would probably take the win for me in that sense. Now, the brakes. I'm never a big fan of the brakes on the Enyaq before, and this hasn't changed my mind. There's a sponginess at the top of the pedal just when you go onto the pedal it feels like you're pushing and it just I don't know it feels like you're just there's a sponge underneath it um, underneath the pedal when you you're pushing down on it it's not horrific you know and it stops the car obviously it's just that you've got to kind of push through that um, so that's the one thing I don't think the brakes are as good as they could be in the Enyaq and I see it feels like a big car so they do need to sort of like haul it up now I'm going down the same pieces of road that I did in the BYD um, and as I say, you can certainly tell the massive difference in the ride quality between the two. This road here is particularly bad. And yes, you can feel the wheels, you know, hitting the bumps and sort of like dropping into sort of like, the, you know, the potholes and stuff. But it's not as uncomfortable. It doesn't give as much intrusion into the cabin as it did with Arto 3. Um, let me just talk about the brakes uh, a little bit further because obviously I need to talk about the regen, which you've got down here. So you're in drive and you pull it back into B and you've got brake regeneration, it starts to slow the car up. But you can also adjust the amount of regen via these paddles on the steering wheel. So you can actually, um, when you're in the drive, oh hang on, let me get back to the drive mode, um, you can adjust the level of brake regen through here. So you've got, um, where is it, recuperation level one, two or three. Three obviously being the maximum. Now it's not one pedal driving, so I've got it on it here and I'm coming up to a junction. Uh, it just brings it down to a creep, you see? So it doesn't bring you down to an absolute stop and hold you on the brake, but it's, it's much more adjustable than you get in the BYD. So in that sense, it's a lot better and a lot easier to control, which I prefer, because as I say, I quite like it just being off and I just use the brakes myself, so that's good. Good visibility, everything's nice and easy to see, there's an excellent driving position like I said, there's a fairness there is with the Arto 3 as well, everything's within easy reach, the screen's easy to see, it's easy to control from up here, yeah, as I say the steering wheel's just that little bit too large for me, but the seats are good, good visibility around the car, good visibility from these big door mirrors, my over the shoulder visibility is excellent as well, but there's no doubt about it, this feels like a much more complete car than the Arto 3. Now, as I say, I keep coming back to this price point. If you'd said to me this car was, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand pounds more, you could go, yeah, I can see that. And you'd maybe go, it's fairly justified, you know, in that sense. But it's not. It's the same price as the Arto 3. I tell you what, it feels like a much more expensive car. I like the Senyak. I do like it. It's a good car to drive. And it's an excellent family car. Now, when it comes to pricing, you would expect the BYD to have the value for money argument all wrapped up. But like I said at the beginning of the film, that isn't one of the Arto 3's strengths. Now, whilst it is with the Dolphin and the Seal, and as I say, if you'd been watching another week when we tested the Seal against the BMW i4, that was a big price difference between those cars. The Arto 3 doesn't really 
counter that argument in some respects. Now there are two trim levels within the Ato 3 range and the prices start at 37,695. This is the top of the range model, the Excellence, and that is 39,695 pounds. And pretty much everything is standard. There's no options to add on to it. However, the Skoda, where you think that it's going to be much more expensive, isn't. You see the ENIAC 60 starts at just over £38,000. This particular model, which has three options fitted, the lounge package, the metallic paint, and the 20-inch wheels, which arguably you could maybe do without, and this is still just over £41,000. So the price difference between the two cars is not as big as you might think of at first. And as well as that, in terms of residual values, Skoda has always been very good when it comes to residuals, whereas BYD, it's a new brand, it's an unknown quantity as yet for residuals. But then you add in warranty packages because the BYD comes with a six year warranty. Skoda's is only three year. So you think, well, that's pretty good value for money. It is, but there's something I also need to tell you about. And I wasn't sure whether or not to mention this in the video, but I think it's only fair that I do. If you are a bit more eagle eyed, you will notice there are differences to the beginning of this video than there is to the end of this video. There's more water here, for instance. The sky is a little bit more grey and that's because I'm filming it across two days and the reason that I've had to film it across two day, day, days is the BYD broke down yesterday. Now in fairness it was a battery drain problem I'm not sure what caused it because it seemed to be fine today and in fairness what I will say um, is the BYD assistance was superb. Uh, AA was here within 25 minutes um, sorting the car out and it seems to have gone away today. However in four years of auto EV, it's the first time a car's broke down with me, a brand new car. So perhaps there is also that little question mark over reliability with the BYD because it's an unknown brand as yet. When BYD launched in the UK in 2023, as I say, they always played the kind of value for money card and they played it really, really well. Um, we, we saw it, as I say, a few weeks back with the BYD sale, where we had a car that was as good looking as the BMW that was almost as good to drive as the BMW, it was a lot more powerful, had a bigger range and was a lot better equipped as standard than the BMW, yet cost significantly less than the BMW did. Even the little Dolphin, now whilst the model they've launched in the UK so far is a little bit more expensive, this year they're going to launch a sub £30,000 Dolphin and it's a C-sector hatchback and of course we've always said the MG4 is the value for money king, well of course that might be about to change when BYD bring the cheaper a smaller battery dolphin out. But the Atto 3 can't quite play that card because as we've shown today, as nice as it is and as well equipped as it is, you can have a Skoda Enyaq which is bigger, almost as well equipped, even with a few options on it, is priced in comparison with the Atto 3, offers more value for money, offers a similar range and capability and drives a lot nicer from a familiar brand like Skoda. So whilst we do still like the BYD Atto 3 and we do still commend the BYD brand in coming into the UK, there's no doubt in our mind that the Atto 3 has to play a distant second against Skoda's Enyaq. I always used to think of sort of like Audi as sort of like the thinking person's BMW. Well now, it's not too far of a stretch of imagination to turn around and say that Skoda is the thinking person's Audi. Thank you for watching yet another episode of Auto EV. As always, please make sure you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then once you've done that, make sure you've pressed the little bell button down below because that's the way you'll get a notification of when our next video has uploaded and it's gone live. If you have enjoyed this video, then please make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have I made the right choice? Would you choose the Atto 3 over the Skoda? Would you have the Skoda over the Atto 3? Would you choose neither? What would you choose instead? As always, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now remember we're also across all social media platforms, so Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, TikTok even, we're there too, so please give us a follow there because that does help us. And remember, if you're in the marketplace for a new or a pre-owned electric vehicle and you need to know all the details about it before you go and sign on the dotted line, then you're going to have to stick on the OTV YouTube channel because if it was a new EV in the UK, We've driven it and subjected it to the Auto EV Road Test Review, which is the road test that actual car buyers trust when it comes to choosing their next electric vehicle. 
All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching. Thank you for continuing to support the channel. I will see you again soon.